Hey, it's me. Today I am doing another episode of Quickly Becoming the Favorite series, Fixing Things I've Ruined. I just love that I've created a series completely based on my failure and it's somehow one of your favorites. My lips were chapped. This is a series all about facing my failure and trying to do something about it because I can't let it go. So let's get them out and look at them, shall we? Oh, this is all oily. This is everything. Some of it just keeps coming back episode after episode after episode. Some of it is new failure. The smell of fresh failure. It stinks. <laughs> I've also added some things that I did a long time ago, like these. You may notice there is a squishy here being suffocated in a plastic bag. You would have had to be watching for a long time to recognize this little fellow, because this is old. I pulled it out because I like the idea of the design, I just don't like the execution. But guess what? Oh, oh, I have its magical little twin that I can completely start from scratch. We're gonna fix this little dude. So let's start there. All right, yeah. So about two years ago, I did a three color challenge squishy makeover. If the words that I just said did not make sense to you. Basically, I limited my color options to three randomly selected colors and I used only those to paint a squishy. This was the result of that. And ugh, it's pretty ugly. I would love to blame the three color challenge for this entirely but 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 my limited color options really had nothing to do with how I painted that face that was me I did it the reason I'm not going to paint directly over this and I have to use the magical little twin is because I used glitter paint on this one making parts of it super globby and gross and trying to paint over that would not go well so here's the twin I'm just getting a real good squish out of it Ooh, yeah oh that's nice uh-huh. Mm. What is happening? This squishy isn't half bad as it is. In fact, I kind of like it. Besides the weird brown splotches on the feet, those are strange. One difference I did notice is this squishy has got little like ball things on his face. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them, which are not present on the other squishy. For those of you who were here last week, remember Grumpy Cherry Berry that I drew? I realized it's a super similar design to this old squishy. I may want to just sidestep just a little to recreate Grumpy Cherry Berry with that <clears throat> Would that be okay? No. Sounds good, Cherry Berry it is. First, I need to cut off his face ball, his face. <sighs> the things on his face and just kind of flatten out that area. I'm also going to be removing the bow. Oh my gosh, I just realized I could have saved that bow for another project. I just chopped right through it like it was worthless. I also have to cut off the tail because this is Cherry Bear. Now that he's been scraped of all detail, on to the next problem, the ears. These are not bear ears because, you know, it's a cat, but I'm thinking that I can just cut them off and turn them reposition them and then they may work as bear ears uh nope nope you know don't that's not doing it for me not perfect and i don't like it it would have been so much easier to just go with the cat design instead of having a full out species change right now but we're in too deep it's time for ear shopping instead of stealing ears from a relatively healthy squishy and landing them in the hopeless bin i'm just gonna go straight there <laughs> That fell right on my toe. Sure enough, I did find this little treasure. <laughs> what a cutie. This thing is mutilated in just about every way, but the ears seem to be in okay shape, so cool. I'll just take those. Thank you for your service. You'll be going in the trash now. Look at those new ears. Woo! So I'm gonna glue them and position them in their new homes, rubber band those to hold them in place. Oh, behold, I've created a brand new species. A few hours later, we'll free him from bondage. And it's gonna take a second for your head to fully come back to shape. Don't worry, it'll happen. There, looking as expected. So it's time to seal these in. I'm going around the entire ear area to clean that up. And also the whole bow or the, the lack of bow that needs to be patched. Oh yeah, and the face too, that's gotta be fixed. Oh, and the, and the tail, geez. I ended up changing a lot on this quite some time later. 
Yeah, there have been some developments. I painted many layers over this to try to smooth everything out, and now finally, I'm happy with the shape. So here we are. How have I already gotten paint on me? I've prepared my grumpy bear color. Gr grump grumpy bear color. <laughs> Stop. And I'm painting that on. Now is the fun part. Here's where it gets good. Not that. I don't know what that was. But I mean the painting part. The painting is the fun part. Once I get a nice tan base over this whole thing, just like that, we are rolling into the details. I'm using a white Posca to mark where I want the face hole to be, as well as all the little facial features, marking where everything should go. He looks grumpier than usual. And it's cherry time. I'm painting the whole cherry, and for some reason this red paint is so opaque. Look at that. Mmm, yum. Now painting on the muzzle and his little stomach patch area place. And then I'm just building up the layers of paint, la la la, okay? Now I almost always use either puffy paint or matte fabric paint on squishies, but today I'm going to incorporate my leather paint. I definitely would not recommend leather paint for a full squishy painting. It is flexible, but it doesn't have as much elasticity as fabric paint. Oh, that cross contamination is disgusting. I've been struggling with using fabric paint for detail work for so long. It's so thick and gluey. It can be really hard to get fine details with fabric paint, so I'm giving this a try just for the detailing, and it was a lot easier to work with. As you can see, you know, cherry berry grumping in the background. There's a quite thick outline in the drawn version around the face. I'm not going to be including all the outlines from the drawing because I think that would just look weird on a three-dimensional object, but this one, yes. And look at us. Why are you looking at me? We are here at the finish line, adding some last little touches to finish this off, including the cherry stem. It's odd looking. I mean, I guess I could have used wire or something else to create a stem, but I didn't want something sharp and pokey in my squishy. That was a weird sentence. <laughs> So from this to that, I'm very sorry if it bothers you that I didn't stick with the same exact concept as the original, but for me, oh, my voice, I'm cool with the kind of slight shift because I like the grumpy bear character much better. Being able to control the colors definitely helped. The new color scheme is much nicer. And I think, you know, I mean, you know, I, I have improved my painting skills slightly in the last two years. Give yourself a pat on the back. So I like the new one a whole lot better. Why did I pose them like that? That's creepy. Okay, what's next? What do you think? What do you think? Well, it's gonna be this one. Is this not one of the ugliest things you've ever seen? This came from my acrylic pour video. That video had a lot of success, but this was not one of them. This was one of the mm -mm, fail, don't like it at all. It's a wood panel. It's nice. I just feel like this doesn't need to go to waste, you know? I think we can still do something with this. Let's do that now. So yes, this was one of my first acrylic pour attempts and it did not turn out well. It's super muddy. The blue splatters on top were kind of done after the fact. I mean, I might as well just, you know, top it off. I think I just made it worse. And they are just clashing. Oh, so awful. I will say there are a couple areas of light in this. Over here, this is kind of pretty. Over here isn't bad. If only I could just like cover up this and, and that and, and nah, the whole thing's trash. The surface looks to be nice and smooth, so I shouldn't have any trouble painting right over it. Speaking of the surface, it's quite oily because I used silicone oil within the paint mixture to try to create cells and all the oil just like stays on the surface, so that's nice. I'm gonna start with some gesso. It's gonna be my magical undo button, erasing all of that mess, starting fresh, and this was going fine you know, how gessoing normally goes. But then I noticed that the gesso was starting to clump up. I think the oil on the surface was doing weird things with the gesso. But once that first layer dried, I went over it again and it was a little bit better, so. Thanks, second coat. Okay, the panel is prepped and ready to go. Now, I didn't wanna do another acrylic pour over top of this because acrylic pour is one of those things, it's kind of unpredictable. So I thought I would just do like a regular painting 
something, something completely unrelated to acrylic pour, but then I couldn't stop thinking about acrylic pour. So I decided to do a hybrid kind of deal and create faux acrylic pour, where I basically just draw it. <gasps> Oh, excuse me, drain it. And I'm using some new paint pen friends. What? This is what friends are, right? Are the I thought, okay, never mind. They're not Poskas, but I've used these several times before. There's quite a few really pretty colors in here that you don't get with Poskas. In comparison with Poskas, these are definitely not as pigmented. You do have to go over and over and over with many layers to build up the color, which is kind of a bummer, you know, nobody likes that. But the good news is you can build up tons of layers. <coughs> Sorry my voice. You can build up tons and tons of layers with these without the paint cracking. Unlike Posca's, which when you build them up, they do crack. I mean, at least for me. Am I the only one who has cracky Posca's? Why does nobody ever talk about the Posca crack? Maybe it's just me. There are pros and cons to both, I suppose. So by drawing acrylic pour, I can hopefully create the effect of acrylic pour without risking the kind of randomish results of an acrylic pour, because you know, acrylic pour, oh my gosh. I don't wanna say those words anymore. Synonyms for acrylic pour, fluid art, paint pouring, pour painting. Okay, with this, I can control exactly how it looks, where each color goes. Obviously, there's not gonna be any muddiness. Granted, some of the appeal of um, paint pouring is that you never know exactly how it's going to turn out. It's like a surprise every time, but painstakingly creating every single detail by hand, that's fun too. I really do love acrylic pour. I've done quite a bit more of it off camera. I even dragged Jordan into it. I'll post pictures of what both of us did on Instagram. Although, of course, you know, I'm no expert. According to the comments that I got on my paint pouring video, I did many things wrong. Personally, I don't think that there's any right or wrong way to do things like this. I mean, there are different techniques. Sure, there are different things you can try to get different effects, but I see it as kind of a free-for-all. In art, it's self-expression, so only your Yourself can express yourself. Oh, this is a little surprise. My paint pen just completely blows up on me <laughs> and paint just started leaking through everywhere. My Posca's never did this to me. As you can see, I'm filling in all of the little cells and making sure to wrap all my colors around the sides so we get a nice finished and continuous look. This definitely took a lot more time than an actual acrylic pour. I could have finished an acrylic pour in a tenth of the time that it took for me to draw one. <laughs> I don't know why I always insist on taking the hard road, but I did it again. Here I've got my Liquitex gloss varnish and I'm just gonna smooth that over to get a nice glossy look. And from this muddy mess to this colorful but controlled chaos, I quite like it. I think this is my favorite acrylic pour yet. <laughs> It's just very satisfying and clean. I'm obsessed with all the colors. It looks like I just completely carelessly threw colors on here, but I actually did put quite a lot of thought into how I wanted to place each color, which colors would be next to each other, and I think it looks pretty nice all together. Georgie. What, Georgie? Well, since you mentioned him, this is the final reminder. There are only a few days left to order a Georgie plush, so don't miss out. He's a little sassy today. Oh, Georgie! I have the link in the description if you wanna get him. Finally, I'm gonna do one last thing. And... I always tease the Russian nesting doll. But look at these pants, okay? If you watch my tie-dye video, you will have seen I tie-dyed them. The tie-dye isn't really the problem, it's the pants. So I guess this isn't really my failure, unless you wanna blame my body for not fitting in them properly. And I don't like them, I'm not gonna wear them. But they've just been sitting, doing nothing, and what a waste, right? So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to make use of these pants. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little different because because, you know, it's it's pants. As I mentioned, I hate the fit of these, so just redecorating them isn't really gonna cut it. You know what will cut it? Cutting it. 
<laughs> so I found a nice area on them and I'm just gonna cut that section out. Oh man, that is not even, nope. Trimming that up, we're gonna get a little crafty today. Oh look, uh, it's squid. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to say about that. Getting out my hot glue gun and I'm gluing over the edges. I've actually done this before. Way back in the day, I did a five minute craft series and this was one of the five minute crafts. So after that, we glue the center and oh, that's not even, it's fine. Flip it over, pinch and gather. And now we have artificially created the bow shape. So let's add our preservatives. <laughs> so unfunny, it's almost kind of funny. You can leave us now. I'm bringing back in the pants cause I need just a little strip of fabric. And then I'm gonna glue down the raw edges, wrap that around, glue it in place. And there we go, just like that. Oh, it's just so cute. But just because I wanted to take it a little step further, I always gotta do it. I, I gotta do it. Wait, one more quick announcement. We do have this year's Halloween design available now. Make sure you check the specific links that I put for specific products because different things are in different places. We got Pickle, of course, Ghost Georgie, Mummy Mr. Hot Cocoa, and the most terrifying thing of all, the out of order rainbow. This is limited edition. You definitely wanna order before October 16th to get it in time for Halloween. Anyway, I'm grabbing some leather paint and I wanna mix this color. Ooh, ah, wee! That's about it. Uh, yeah, close your eyes if you don't like polka dots, because I'm doing it. I just added polka dots all over this in like the yin yang kind of way. Wherever it's blue, there's purple dots. Wherever it's purple, there's blue dots. I don't know if this was necessary, but I feel like it's more unique this way. So from a crusty pair of pants to a cute little bow. Now, of course, I did not use all the fabric from the pants. Maybe I'll make more of these later. I actually really like this idea of making bows and then like painting things on them. I stuck a safety pin in the back so that I can can basically just pin it onto anything that I want as decoration. And that's it for today. I hope you like what I put together. I think all of these were definite improvements on the originals. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.